Okay, and we made it into the game all right. So hello everyone, welcome to round number two. In our very first uh, Jupiter's Forge IO tournament, this time we are going to be featuring Trapping Van Hexapus, NC Game Wizard, and Andreas G. And Philip Thanik, still here doing some yes. commentary with first us. First thing we want to look at, the HQs we have, Expansive Scavenger, Nomads, and Elites. Um, this time we do have a nice scavenger spot over here in the northwest area. One of the HQs for the Nomad over here in the northeast area by this very high silicon. That would be a great start. And then another one, then put it down by some aluminum oxygen somewhere else on the map. A scavenger HQ has been founded. NC Game okay. Wizard going for the second scavenger spot that I hadn't mentioned just yet. Trats going for that Nomad spot taking the aluminum and going for a different silicon spot so there are actually multiple nomad spots i wouldn't be surprised if we are nomad only scavenger only in this game yeah there's some great nomad and scavenger locations for sure here hexapus has decided he's gonna end up as elite though so andreas he needs to decide if he's gonna round it out with an expansive or if he's gonna go ahead and copy one that of the players who have already gotten down very bold elite I will say. Very bold. Well, he's got that ice. He's got some iron. No basalt super close, though. Worries me. Yeah. The scavenger HQ has oh, this great. ion collector. <laughs> we're, we're just going to be trying to run off fuel. I gotta say, they're profitable right now. If you can get them down, which, well, he can afford that, we that's going to make him some money. Cheap steel. Some question in chat about both the nomads and the elites, so... As you can see by looking at Trap, Nomads get two HQ modules. They are like scavengers, except they use silicon for their upgrade, and they have very fast upgrades. As you can see, Trap already HQ2, everybody else sitting on HQ3, HQ everyone else on HQ2 or 1. Elites, as I was mentioning earlier, Elites are kind of like expansives, but slower and they have special advanced buildings. That's them in a nutshell. Yeah, absolutely. That is that is nutshelling of the two. There are quite a few changes that go into them, and we'll probably talk about them as they come up for now. Of course, the most important thing for Nomads is simply their, their two HQs, Very able to powerful. found in two separate locations. As, as you're saying, Philothanic, extremely, extremely powerful ability for them. Yeah, because it's in particular, you can just look at Trat now, just to cover people who haven't seen it yet. You get this basic idea that while the aluminum and the silicon, they were far away from each other, it might have been a di bit difficult to get that perfect setup where you're getting carbon and silicon and aluminum if it were just one headquarter. But because you get two, you just get the best of both worlds. Then you effectively have to try and use that springboard to get into the end of the game, which is very difficult as Nomads have almost upgraded. no bonuses remaining at that point once you've gotten into the very late stages. Right, Nomads are like scavengers in that regard. They need to get a buy or make a lot of money early, especially in comparison to Hexapus's Elite, if Hexapus can survive this early game, which it looks like so far is doing a pretty good job. Should be making a lot of money. Yeah, Good those game. those ion collectors are running out a little bit, though. I mean, there are some garages here, but Nomads also, in the early game, of course, they don't usually do very much shipping, purely because they can get the best location possible to not have to ship, ship at all so easily. And then, once again, not a lot of shipping from MC Game Wizard. So for the moment, fuel is dead. But as we all know, that's likely to rebound later as more and more of these water processors come online. Yeah, and we can see right now just the difference experience playing Nomad has between Trat and Andreas. Trat with a little bit better found than Andreas did. Andreas went for carbon instead of aluminum, so Trat is leading the pack in HQ upgrades. Andreas going for maybe a little bit more of a long-term play, going for a bunch of this carbon. Unfortunately, carbon is not very high, so he's shipping a medium aluminum. And uh, hence his upgrades have stalled out, plus going into double geos. But Andreas is making power money, so might be able to come back. All right, we've got some bold boosts hitting the field now, with geothermal being boosted for Trat Ping Ben. He is in an awful lot of debt, but a boosted geotherm can get a lot of work done in trying to resolve that, paying off about 400 of it a second for the time being. Meanwhile, 
Andreas G, no debt whatsoever right now. Very helpful for him, potentially. And NC Game Wizard boosting out a pair of farms, which has ended up making quite a lot of money. I mean, that's a decent amount of cash coming in, especially because it'll help overwhelm your own food debt more easily. And he's already pushed up to HQ4 too, so very nice use of boost from NC Game Wizard. He gets away with it. Yeah, Hexapus has sort of stalled out here a little bit, finally started making money again. Uh, for a while, he's just sitting there in the 20s, not moving up whatsoever. Let's see, he's... The black market is online. The uh, Hexapus needs 30k to upgrade. And uh, that's that's where being an ex elite hurts a little bit. Those really expensive, hard to get to upgrades. Yeah, and I think what we're seeing here partially is being an HQ3 without access to Basalt. Now, Hexapus had tried to make a move to get into nuclear plants while power was still viable. Uh -huh. And it's really not anymore. Unfortunately, he got power surged out of that. Didn't really have a goon squad set up to defend it, just a goon squad to set up generally to defend. And I think if we saw Basalt from Hexapus maybe instead of those nuclear plants at HQ3, or maybe instead of some of these water processors, we'd be looking at a very different situation, right? Easier yes. to keep steel online, you're not leaking that iron. More silicon up at $120, more uranium, which is already up at $62 and helps out with the nuke plants. It's just that basalt is so crucial, I think, for the elites. It is very crucial. Um, another thing about elites is a lot of these buildings within elites, so they cost aluminum to construct. Mm -hmm. So that definitely doesn't help you because, you know, everybody else, aluminum is their secondary upgrade resource and a secondary building resource for many of these buildings. Their elites are unique in that regard. Um, I don't know. Uh, personally, I think they should use silicon instead, but we got to wait for Soren to make those sorts of balanced decisions. So we won't talk it is a bit too much difficult about it. to have to worry with, about uh, those separate primary resources and trying to gather all of them together. So for this game, though, we do have a couple of Pleasure Domes coming down now. Pleasure Dome should be reasonable this game. You can see 268 is the expected. That just jumped up dramatically because, frankly, Hexapus hit that upgrade button. One of the mm -hmm. things to know about Elites is they contribute the most to a Pleasure Dome. Uh, once yes. Jupiter's Forge hit. In fact, more than anyone else has ever contributed before. They are above Expansives, who used to be the top. Yeah, they are, I believe they contribute there. five pressure, which is the highest, and mm -hmm. then it goes down, down, uh, down the line for all the HQs with robots obviously being at zero. Zero. Yes, robots don't need pleasure domes, as it turns out. They're just happy workers. Let's uh, take a look at our game right now. We have Endgame Wizard, who we haven't talked about very much, is caught up at level 5, only about 10k behind Trap right now. So NC Game Wizard doing very well. Very well in this game, especially considering I'm not sure that the NC Game Wizard has actually ever played on IO before. Yeah, I'm not sure he has either before today. So this is a so that's very good impressive. showing. But, but I will good. say, the downside he has, he does have a cash lead, and that's fantastic. This adrenaline boost going unchecked is amazing for him, with water being kept at a reasonable price by Hexapus in particular all game. But he doesn't have an optimization center down, he doesn't have a patent lab down, he doesn't have a pleasure dome down, right? All he has is this raw cash, and so he's going to need to get something done with that in order to be successful. And you can see Andreas G also managing to make quite a bit of money at this point. Right, Andreas G, his uh, move into this carbon is starting to pay out, although he does have 800 of that stockpiled, so that 46 isn't the true price of carbon, it's much, much lower. That being said, he does have a lot of cash on hand, did get to HQ5 as well. We have some aggression from Trap going on here, some Pleasure Dome being mutinied around Trap with a the only optimization center. It mm -hmm. looks like. Three bonuses on that. So he, he's going for the same strategy as he was going for last time, and that's kind of what you have to do with a Nomad. Get get your upgrades to HQ 4 or 5 quickly, and then pour in money into optimizations to make up for the lack of claims. He's also researching thinking machines. It's Andreas researching. Where's his patent lab? Not being used. Going for nanotech. Nanotech, yep. That's what he's decided to... To go with all right more mutinies landing all over these pleasure domes that is an important building to try and control i do wonder 
if we're going to see Trat, he's headed into Thinking Machines now. I really like that. Maybe with that, could pick up something like transparent aluminum with synthetic meat. Because right now, what I'm seeing is $590 off-world food. $600 off-world food now. If you can keep that food production online, keep that that source of food acceptable, maybe even make it difficult for everybody else so you're just developing a decent stockpile, that is going to be some seriously profitable launches if you can get those elevators up. Mm, yes, it will be. Trat did have both his his Pleasure Dome and Optimization Center mutinied from him. Oh, we have a IO Quake. An IO Quake. My <laughs> least favorite event of the game. IO Quake Everybody blows up pair, six but... random buildings. No advanced buildings, I believe. I think that was changed. Recently. Yeah, I think it has to be uh, either production buildings or resource collection buildings. It's not going to hit your space elevator. But yeah, rather frustrating to have to deal with. Just suddenly half your stuff is blown up and you've got to suddenly spend time and energy fixing all of it rather than continuing forward on your plan. It definitely is disruptive, to say the least. NC Game Wizard is moving into a space elevator. Uh, after spending the money, it cost them 101k to put that space elevator up. So it was a little bit less. It's not hologrammed. Holograms are on the market. Now we have low that mutinies. Is bold? Low mutinies, low price mutinies, low price power surges. So yeah, bold. That's a good word to describe it. Bold is one of my favorite words for a move like that. Yeah, it is being black market is boosted at the moment, it looks like. Also, yeah, just protected by a goon squad. No hologram for that. Space Elevator is online. He's going to want to get that functional as soon as he can. Launch and those things food. are huge. Yep. 37 food, food launch, launch is definitely the right one. Food. Uh, the only thing NC Game Wizard might want to move into food is... Uh, losing 262 in food a second and that doesn't count the food that they're sending off world via the space elevator yeah i might want to just clean up some of these these tiles that they seem to have gotten just a little out of control with having been blown up they don't have all the adjacency in the right place necessarily just uh might want to do some switching around and get a decent source of food production online Let's uh, check in with Trat really quick. Trat was the had a lot of black market thrown his way. Has a decent amount of cash, a good handful of decent patents, thinking machines, liquid batteries, and virtual reality. Trying to get perpetual motion, then transparent aluminum next. Not sure those are in the right order, but power is really high, so perhaps that's okay. Yeah, an interesting way to prioritize it for sure, though, especially considering. Well, Trap does have, I believe, two geotherms. Yeah, Andreas is going to be Trap to uh, oops, transparent just... aluminum. He'll get it in six seconds from now. Yep, just a little too late. And transparent aluminum certainly looks like a fantastic, fantastic patent. Oh, right. Game, as space elevators are just so valuable. Andreas' space elevator, 33k. Compared to trats that would cost, oh, 116. Interesting. Yeah, that, uh, getting rid of 77 glass, we're paying for a, what is that, 12k, 10k patent. Very good deal. Yeah, that is, that is certainly going to, to do some work for you, as it turns out. But Andreas G, he's going to want to go ahead and get a space elevator down to get decent use out of this. I don't see one started for him. No, he has just a yet. hologram ready for it. Oh, yeah, it is come down now. He's got it next to his ion collector. There we go. No thinking machines, so... Bit of an interesting place to, to prioritize putting it. Maybe it just was the best location he had. Yeah, hope, hope that uh, somebody might miss it with all the mess of interconnected buildings between NC Game Wizard and Andreas. We haven't talked about Hexpus for a while. Hexpus is still kind of lagging over here on HQ4. <laughs> He's still HQ4. Four. Seven, I don't 60, know what to 7 talk K about. next. Yeah, that not going for basalt. He does finally have some basalt up to basalt, but it's a little bit late to be honest. He does have one optimization center going down, researching a bunch of optimizations. One thing that elites do get when they get a perfect 
for their optimizations, they get an extra claim. Yes, so he's got one of those now, having perfected water. He should have power in, oh, about a minute here. He'll get one more claim from power. But that said, still so far away from even getting up to HQ5. Things are still looking uh, dicey for Hexapus. Right, yeah, this is this is why you can sort of see why you don't found an elite away from Basalt and also can see why elites might have trouble on a different planet like Ceres. Certainly. Certainly could make things a little bit difficult. I guess Hexapus could sell down his water and hit HQ5 before too long. I do wonder if it would have been a good move for Hexapus to go ahead and get into his own patent lab and seriously start abusing that other elite bonus that uh, lots of people lots of people like to focus on with the elite when they remember it's there. You can take patents that have already been taken. And yes. so despite the fact that Trat and Andreas G have really divvied up a lot of the solid so... patents this game, that does not mean they have locked Hexapus out of them. So tools like virtual reality, transparent aluminum could still be quite, quite powerful. Yes, for you, uh, the patents cost the same to license instead of researching. And when you license a patent, I believe half of the patent cost goes to the person who owns the patent in chems. Complicated. We do have some mutinies going on, some power surges here. Um, Trap and Andreas both with two space elevators. Andreas having a significant cash lead over Trap right now. About 70k or so. I can do quick mental math in my head. Both it's all that them. money he didn't spend on blacks. Yes, yes it is. Um, both players look to be in strong late game positions. Andreas and Trat both stock, fully built in the stock. The one advantage that Trat does have over Andreas, he has a bunch of optimizations right now in uh, lots of de different decent areas. Glass, oxygen, food, electronics, silicon, and carbon. Andreas has none. The longer yeah. this game goes, the better it's going to get for Trat over Andreas. I do want to point out that we are seeing this game, one of the reasons that oftentimes elites will prioritize optimizing chemicals early, as chemicals are just, they're so valuable right now and so expensive right now. So it's a little bit difficult for you to continue with your optimizations because they're so expensive to get. But if you can get there, if you can get those chems optimized, that is going to be a fantastic source of cash this game. Now, Look at how expensive they are. Some of that is NC Game Wizard messing is around. a bold move by Trat once again. A buying straight yeah. into NC Game Wizard, who does have the cash to immediately buy back into Trat, and that's what NC Game Wizard should be doing. Oh man, Counter Andreas G could just jump in here and and take out NC Game Wizard. That if you would be to. very tempting as Andreas, simply because that way you get those two claims and prevent Trap from getting it, and otherwise you're equal. Yeah, man, I would do it. As Alternatively, I two claims up. well, the other thing the question is, is NC Game Wizard just might be trying to wait to shift by Hexapus. He's 92% of the way there himself. No, Ooh. Andreas is going to buy in a trap. Right so tra we, that is also another good move. So we have a nice complicated stock dance going on here. Oh no. Now things get weird because NC Game Wizard is still an extremely serious threat this game. And I believe, yeah, can knock out Hexapus if he wants, well, whenever he now wants. Now NC Game Wizard should knock out Trat. He can knock out Trat. Yeah, he, he should do can it right now. He, I don't know he why he's waiting. That was a clear mistake by NC Game Wizard. Yes, had the opportunity to bring down Trat Ping Vin, reclaim a significant amount of his own stock. Not all of it. Now, I will say the downside to that is you don't get all your own stock back in that no, situation, right? But you don't you die. You do end up, you don't die. I will agree with you that not dying should probably be priority uh, numero uno if you're in a situation where dying might happen, especially in the next two seconds. But. NC Game Wizard, he wouldn't be in a great spot because Andreas G would own probably about two of his own stock. One might be left up in the air a little bit, but he would have two extra claims. So that's a nice thing. He would not be dead. Mm -hmm. And he could potentially work with Hexapus to fight back against Andreas G. Hexapus becoming a threat in his own right at this point, having gotten three things perfectly optimized, headed to a fourth, 
has HQ level 5. Still never built a Pleasure Dome, which I would consider, you know, an absolute and complete error in every way, shape, and form. But, of course, chemicals are still expensive. Still expensive. So maybe. Well, this is where things get interesting. Andreas is going to be forced to buy into Trat, since Trat's buying into him. But Exopus mm -hmm. is 78% of the way onto Andreas. So this, this, very, this very dangerous. stock game is just very interesting. So, I mean, if I'm Hexapus, I want to... I'm not sure what to do with Hexapus. Probably just sit here and wait. See yeah, what happens. Yeah, I would be sitting there and not doing anything for a long time if I were Hexapus. Just, let's hold the off. Let's see what happens. Now, he could kill Andreas if he wants to. But that does not seem like the play in a lot of ways. Mm. No, it doesn't seem like the play. I tend to agree. Um, did our game just freeze? Oh, I well, caught back up. Okay. Hopefully that didn't happen for our players. Hopefully. Let me make sure that I didn't have any drops of any sort. Nope, I didn't have a drop on my end, so. Well, Andreas does have... No, Hexapus has the buy on Trat. That is something I might be tempted as Hexapus to do. But uh, he's still going to wait. Uh, a million he's got dollars. A million dollars in cash. Your stock is being sold. Oh, Trat is selling out of Andreas. That's interesting. Are both players identifying, man, Hexapus is a problem? I'm. Stock is I have the no case, idea what to do. Too little, here, so. too late. I mean. All right, everybody can be bought by somebody. Buddy. So, <laughs> who is going to decide what the best way is to pull the trigger first? Well, Hexapus is not going to get to make a decision as Trat brings yeah, him that... right on down. Yeah. Not sure what Hexapus is thinking there. Um. Well, this will be once again. We have uh, both. Both of our players who got bought out by Trat could have bought Trat. Defending themselves first. And Hexapus realizes this in chat, as you can see. Um, yeah, now Hexapus realizes Trat is still in a very dangerous position, though, because Andreas G has most of what he needs to bring Trat down. Yeah. Trat. Ugh. Andreas just needs these two launches that go off. Uh, launches are still. Well, okay, they're significantly less at 24k, so. Yeah, food got Andreas pricey. Andreas is still. Well, he's about 100k behind on the buy now that Trat has bought everything, all of his stock. So Trat is earning 3.2k so or so in sub-income, and that's climbing. The question is, can this 74%, which is climbing very fast, get to tr get all the way to the top? There's the launch. There's it's not there yet with the launch. 2%. Nope. And Trat pulls it off. <sighs> oh boy. And ev Trat should have, could have lost so many times that game. But he didn't. And, uh, when, when you make mistakes in Awful Trading Company, even small ones, you usually get punished. It's a very competitive yes. game. Yes, you will often get punished for for an error like that in off-world trading company. Hexapus really did come into it in the late game. You could see that's where elites shine. It's not it's not quite in the same spot as everybody else. Even more booming, I would say, than expansives are. But uh, mm -hmm. he became a serious threat late in that game that Frat had to change focus and bring him down first before moving on to clean up the game uh, and Andreas right. G. If that game, if the game ever goes late and there's an elite in it, you need to have a mental timer in the back of your mind. Somewhere somewhere around when Elite's at HQ4, that's when you need to start paying attention to them. If you haven't already, just hit them with a couple black market items. Try and keep them from getting that super late game advantage. Um, unfortunately, yeah. if you're in a lot of battles with other people, it's very hard to notice that. Now, if you are the Elite and you have a million dollars, use it. Use it, yes, kill someone. It turns out that that's better than dying most of the time. If you just if you just go ahead and buy somebody yourself and then they don't buy you, it's fantastic. But 
I'm just kind of looking around at these elite buildings because perfect optimizations on IO in particular are just a bit ridiculous, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, water processor. It has no adjacency. Oxygen's almost $400, fuel's at like $200, but the water processor, still a net of $348. <laughs> it's just, okay. 